Vijay Bhamwani, author and CEO, bsbillindia.com. Uh, Vijay, welcome to the show. Uh, my first question to you, as you would be hearing, Melanie, uh, in terms of uh, what is happening uh, between uh, the oil prices, WTI and Brent crude, there has been some sort of widening of the spreads. Uh, what do you make out? Like, what's the trading flavor now? Hi, thank you for having me on your show. What you're seeing is a pull and push uh, action in crude oil prices. On one hand, you have temporary supply disruptions thanks to the Hurricane Irma. On the other hand, uh, two very large consumers of uh, uh, fossil fuels, China and India, are pushing towards uh, uh, electric vehicles rather than uh, uh, use petrol and diesel driven cars. So in the far future, you're going to see demand contraction. In the absolute near future, you have supply disruptions. The other major factor that's going to impact crude prices for the coming two quarters minimum is the Saudi Aramco IPO, which is around the corner. Till the IPO is still in the pipeline, I wouldn't expect crude prices to decline substantially. But once the IPO is done, don't be surprised if crude turns downwards. Right, Vijay, then again, uh, if you're looking in terms of the Hurricane Irma, now, the, it was a Category 4 storm on Sunday. Some sort of damages, they actually have been reported. Uh, but do you think, like, over the next few days, because we again are basically coming back from the impact of Hurricane Harvey also, and that basically brought good news for the refiners, but uh, not for the oil price. Um, and as you were just pointing out, uh, usually how much time it takes uh, for the supply to come back? In your own assessment from the past, uh, because normally markets actually trade much ahead of the news. So what do you think, like, can oil price again be uh, like uh, uh, trading in a very narrow range? I think so, yes. And uh, from historical evidence, if you see uh, Katrina a couple of years ago, all it takes for the oil market to shrug off these kind of developments are max of three, three and a half weeks. And <laughs> things will come back to normal. Uh, even other bigger supply disruptions like the ISIS problem in 2014, the markets ultimately shrugged it off and went about their usual routine business. So I, I don't expect these hurricanes to have a very lasting impact on crude oil prices. So Vijay, uh, let me ask you like one interesting question here. And uh, this is um, away from the hurricane, this is away from whatever is happening in the near term. Uh, one of the facts basically which we have heard is uh, that um, uh, China actually is allowing uh, the oil sales to denominate in yuan. And if I look at the currency impact also, the yuan basically has gained to the highest level since May 2016. Uh, what do you think it could imply for the oil price? Because so far we have been used to actually dollar denominated oil sales and uh, a lot of conflict basically has been around the currency and oil both. Uh, can actually this affect uh, the oil price also? Not too much. Although uh, oil has been trading in um, a euro also in select areas other than the US dollar. So this would not really be an earth shaking event uh, where crude oil pricing is concerned. Pricing ultimately will uh, return back to the equation of demand and supply. And uh, the currency uh, which Yuan you're talking about will not really have too much of an uh, abject effect on oil prices. Right. And uh, do you believe uh, that, uh, as we're talking just about uh, the yuan also, uh, do you believe that in terms of uh, the move between the dollar and oil, and I'm just trying to uh, guess, but trying to actually find something more interesting for our viewers also, if there is any sort of a factor which is outside of the current demand supply, uh, is there any sort of risk right now to the dollar, which, because normally dollar and oil, they also move in tandem. So is there any risk uh, to the dollar also which you think perhaps could push oil towards the 55 to 60 dollar range or uh, uh, do you think that demand supply is the one which is dominating the entire landscape and that's why the range is not getting uh, broken? Well, as far as commodity markets are concerned, we need to understand that it's like a seesaw. So on one end, you have the currency, which is the US dollar in which all the current commodities are traded. <laughs> so if, if the dollar was to gain strength and uh, uh, it would immediately push down commodity prices. And if the dollar was to weaken, commodity prices tend to go up. So if at all the dollar is weakening because of any internal or uh, uh, trade uh, data emanating from the US, particularly even the interest rate uh, expectations, oil prices in the short term might just blip up. Let's also not forget that US turns into an exporter of oil from 2018 and thereafter. So uh, oil so far, the US wanted lower prices as long as it was a net importer. But once it turns a net exporter, it's a different ballgame altogether. 
Right, Vijay. And as uh, those actually were your views on oil price, let's also talk about the precious metals here. Uh, one pocket which has been outperforming and gaining strength uh, from strength. A lot of views actually, uh, they have been that perhaps this could be the top. Now actually gold could start correcting back towards $1,200, $1,100. Uh, we actually seen that gold actually has slipped slightly from the one year high, but still uh, it's trading actually very strong at the current levels. What's your own assessment in terms of uh, uh, what actually gold prices are actually offering in terms of risk reward ratio and overall how is the global risk aversion scenario uh, fueling the gold rally? I think if you are a long term investor who is looking at uh, taking physical delivery of gold or maybe even ETF uh, investments in gold with a minimum of 5 to 7 year time frames I think you are in a sweet spot. Because uh, gold prices, looking at uh, the way the uh, global economic scenario is, are frankly under-discounted. As also with silver, thanks to the solar energy and uh, photovoltaic cell uh, uh, consumption, uh, which would trigger off uh, another demand uh, uh, spike uh, from the photovoltaic uh, segment. So if you're, if you're looking at very long-term investments, I think it's not a bad time to buy. But if you're trying to time the market, which I don't think is possible, in the absolute near term, you might just see as crude oil prices go down, inflationary fears would go down and gold might just settle down a bit before uh, finding its own feet again. Right. So, Vijay, again, if I talk about in terms of the base metals also, uh, what's your own assessment about uh, the current strength of the rally? Uh, copper, zinc, aluminum, they all actually have rallied. But we have seen some sort of profit booking happening in the Friday's trade. Uh, and if you combine today's cues, uh, what's your own assessment? Uh, was this a, a sort of a mild profit booking and we can again be see base, base metals uh, continue their up move or you think uh, now it's time to be cautious? Well, by the end of 2014, I'd been advocating that uh, uh, the hard assets market, particularly the industrial metals, were turning pro-cyclical. Now, after the U.S. elections in which uh, President uh, Trump uh, was elected surprisingly in the U.S., we started witnessing what is now popularly known as a reflation rally. Now, if you see the highs of uh, November, in November or December, depending on which commodity you're looking at, most of the commodity prices, I'm talking of base metals here, have reacted downwards after hitting near about those November, December 2016 highs. Barring copper, which is trading above those levels, and copper is known to be the tin roof of the economy or the barometer of the economy, that is the only sweet spot in the industrial metals market. Other than those, I think there might be some amount of profit taking. Take a look at lead, zinc, nickel. They have reacted down very sharply on Friday, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit more profit taking coming in uh, even in the coming future. Right. So again, uh, what actually you're saying is uh, perhaps it could be a time where you should be really cautious. Uh, overall, in terms of uh, base metals, precious metals, oil, uh, which I just, if I just wanted to ask you, like what could be the top two uh, picks in terms of where there could be positive bias uh, uh, for our investors, for our views? Where uh, optimism is concerned, I still see optimism on my trading screens on uh, copper. But uh, other than those, I, I would expect a little bit of profit taking before they start finding their feet again. Right. Uh, Vijay, again, uh, lastly, uh, what you're saying is, uh, if I want to ask you in terms of uh, just gold, silver again, uh, between a scenario like what could actually push the gold prices into a severe profit booking mode? Uh, is there anything? Because we've seen all debt limits. Uh, then we've also seen... Uh, a sort of uh, correction, short-term correction equities. Is there anything which actually, actually could push the gold prices material lower? If at all you want gold prices lower, you'd have to have a huge decline in oil, preferably before 45 uh, US dollars uh, to a barrel. Secondly, you would want to have interest rates going high in the US, which is when gold prices again might just come down. Thirdly, the dollar would have to strengthen substantially for gold prices to come off again. So watch these th three factors with uh, your ears to the ground and you have clues on to where gold is going in the near future.